Here in my fourth video, we're going to use how to use the unit circle to evaluate trig expression. So the beautiful thing about the unit circle is it will be a great tool to quickly help us evaluate trig expressions for given common angles, the angles that are represented on our unit circle. And so the first thing I want to do is I'd really like to um, just, just show what this looks like. So, so previously for sine theta, we've designed sine theta as opposite over hypotenuse. Now let me just draw... Uh, let, let's take a 30 degree angle for example and I'm going to draw a little right triangle here and what we've got for, for our little right triangle that I've shaded in is for a given angle theta and I did a 30 degree angle here it's kind of covered up with my shading but I did a 30 degree angle this would be the opposite side and this would be the hypotenuse now if we're representing this right triangle on a unit circle okay the opposite side would just be the y coordinate of this point if this point has a y coordinate of one half that means it's half of a unit above the x-axis. That's the, the length of this opposite side. So that opposite side is really just our y-coordinate. And our hypotenuse here, okay, is the radius of the circle. Now remember, we call this a unit circle because it has a radius of 1. So our hypotenuse is really just a 1. So y over 1, well, that's just y. So what we're saying is to evaluate the sine trig function for any of these common angles, all you have to do is look at the y-coordinate of that angle. So the sine of a 45-degree angle is root 2 over 2. The sine of a 120-degree angle is root 3 over 2, so on and so forth. And so you might be predicting what cosine will be already. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, for, for this right triangle right here that has a angle of theta of 30 degrees, the adjacent side is this right here. Well, we know that, that this length, this horizontal distance right here, is the same as the x-coordinate of this point. It's how far to the right of the origin we go. So if we go to the right, root 3 over 2 units, that's our adjacent side. Well, that's also just the x-coordinate of, of that point. And then once again, our hypotenuse is the radius of 1, which means that to find cosine of a given angle, we just look at the x-coordinate of that point. So the cosine of 300 degrees is 1 half. The cosine of 225 degrees or of 5 pi over 4 radians is negative root 2 over 2. I'm just looking at the x-coordinate. And then lastly, for tangent, that's opposite over adjacent. That's opposite over adjacent. That's y over x. So I can just take the y-coordinate and divide it by the x-coordinate. If I did 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, that would give us tangent. And we'll talk about how to divide those fractions here in a little bit. Now, um, we have the, the reciprocal functions. So if sine is y, cosecant of theta, which is our reciprocal function, would be the reciprocal of y. It would be 1 over y. You can just take whatever y is and find the reciprocal. You can just flip it. Same thing, secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine, so you can just flip it or find the reciprocal. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so you can just flip it. Now, what I've got here is I've got a little slide where we are going to find all six trig functions for a given angle theta. And we're going to use 5 pi over 6, which looks like it's in radians. So there's my x and there's my y. Now, in order to give me room to show you the math here, I'm going to do this on two different slides. So we're going to zoom in on 5 pi over 6 over here. And then there's our y coordinate, there's our x coordinate. So let's do these first four functions first. Now, for sine of theta, that's so easy. We're just looking at the y coordinate of that point. The y coordinate is 1 half. And then the reciprocal function, oh my gosh, that's going to be so easy. I'm just taking the reciprocal of one half. In other words, I'm flipping one half to get two. To find cosine of that angle, we're just going to look at the x-coordinate. So for 5 pi over 6, our x-coordinate is negative root 3 over 2. And then to find secant, that's just the reciprocal of this. Now, here we got a little bit of math involved, because if I do find the reciprocal and do 2 over root 3, you're not supposed to leave a radical in the denominator. This is called rationalizing the denominator. If you need a full video on that, you can find that. But what we're going to do is whatever that denominator is, we're going to multiply by, by what I call a fancy 1, because anything over itself is 1, and then we're going to multiply straight across. So we have negative 2 root 3 over 3. The, I got the 3 because root 3 times root 3 is root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So we've taken this and rewritten it in this form because this is considered more simplified. Now, let's look at our last two trig functions. We're going to look at tangent and cotangent, okay? 
tangent is y over x. So here's where we got to do a little bit more math. Because to do y over x, we're going to take our y coordinate of 1 half and divide it by our x coordinate of negative root 3 over 2. So that's why I want to give myself a little space, because this has a little math involved. When you divide fractions, you flip the second and multiply. Okay? And then when we multiply straight across, those twos cancel. And we get 1 over root 3. But then once again, we have to do that process of rationalizing. I can't leave that radical in the denominator, so I'm going to do root 3 over root 3. And then in the numerator, 1 times root 3 is root 3. In my denominator, root 3 times root 3 is root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Notice it doesn't matter where you put your negative. I put it in the numerator. We just know that a negative times a positive is a negative. Now, here's what I want to show you. Cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of tangent. Instead of x over y, or excuse me, instead of y over x, it's x over y. So you could just flip this. You'd say, okay, well, I'll just flip this and do negative 3 over root 3, but then you'd have to rationalize your denominator again. What might be easier is to go back to this form of our answer. Do you see this form of our answer? If I take the reciprocal of that, that just becomes negative root 3 over 1 or negative root 3. I think that's a little bit easier. So we have evaluated all six trig functions. I think I have one slide with two practice problems, and then we're done. So the, both these problems add just a small wrinkle into our process. For one, if we're finding cosine of 10 pi over 3, you might look here and say, okay, well, I'm looking at all my radian measures. I don't see 10 pi over 3 here. Well, 10 pi over 3, that's more than 2 pi. 10 over 3 is more than 2, so this is not one of our common angles on our unit circle. So maybe we can find a coterminal angle. So I have another video if you'd like to find a coterminal angle. But what we can do is we can subtract 2 pi, okay? So that would be... So if I subtracted 2 pi, i got to find a common denominator of 3, and 2 is equal to 6 over 3. So if I actually subtract and find a coterminal angle, we find that finding the cosine of 10 pi over 3 would be the same as finding the cosine of 4 pi over 3. And 4 pi over 3 is one of our unit circle angles. So to find the cosine of 4 pi over 3, I'm just going to look for the x-coordinate at 4 pi over 3, which is negative one half. So I give you example one to show you that sometimes you might have to find a coterminal angle. Now example two, I'm showing this for two reasons. For one, because we can do a negative angle, and two, because it's a reciprocal function. So what I'm going to do here to find cosecant is I'm going to start by looking at negative 60. Well, we know that to find an angle, you rotate counterclockwise. So to find the negative angle, you're going to rotate counterclockwise. Okay? So that's negative 60. Now, to do that, what we're going to do is... I'm going to go negative 60 degrees, and you see that negative 60 is coterminal with 300. We also know that cosecant, okay, is the reciprocal of sine. Well, that means what we can do is we can find sine of negative 60, and sine of negative 60 is negative root 3 over 2, the y-coordinate, and therefore cosecant of negative 60 will be the reciprocal. And then all we got to do, you may have guessed it, we'll just rationalize our denominator. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9, and root 9 is 3. So that was our last couple of examples for practice. I think after this you should have a good uh, idea of how to evaluate trig functions with the unit circle.